So Jordan. Mm. Uh, yes, I I caught, caught me in the middle of some water. <laughs> yeah. Um, over the summer, I loved the film Atomic Blonde. Uh -huh. I'm obsessed with the show The Americans, and I just saw The Shape of Water. All of these are set sort of in the Cold War, mm -hmm. and Counterparts has a real Cold War vibe to it. It does. Yeah. I'm wondering if you could tell us why that resonates so strongly to an audience in 2018. Cold War? Like, wh yeah. why that idea of the Cold War resonates yeah. strongly? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Do you want to take this one? I I can, uh, yeah, I guess I can jump in. I mean, it, it, it seems like you had some thoughts honestly, on it. So. Honestly, really, for us, you know, why... Uh, I think we're seeing a lot of Cold War stuff is is because it is rooted in the genre of our generation's youth. Yeah, you sure. You know, like we came up with, you know, as people who came up in the 80s, you know, and that's why I think you look at Stranger Things too and, and all that, yeah. you know, uh, I think it, it speaks to the kinds of action stories, the kinds of thriller stories that we grew up with mm. uh, and that feel familiar to us. And so I think you're seeing a lot of it because there's almost a nostalgia for it. Right. And we wanted to tap into some of that nostalgia with this show yeah, for sure. uh, when it comes to like a, a the spirit of a Cold War show, but set present day, uh, you know, in a in a version of Berlin uh, that is a little different from any version that we've seen before. Uh, so I think that's where it started. Yeah, sort of genre nostalgia and wanting to live both um, in the the sort of genre traditions of of our youth of the past, but also kind of modernize them, and yeah, update I, them, and sort of what, why are they fresh right now? How do, you, say, how do you repackage them for a contemporary audience? Yeah, I mean, you look at uh, Cold War th spy thrillers are the best spy thrillers. I yeah. mean, you know, whatever it may be from, you know, even when it's not just the John le Carré stuff, you're looking at the Tom Clancy stuff, you know, yeah. it's it's that to me is when it's always at its most interesting. Uh, well, because it's always about humans. It's always yeah. about, like, actual people going into the world and you know we, we've talked about this idea that spies are, are are just people they're almost they're artists they're sort yeah. of flawed um, challenged humans that are kind of operating individually or in, in groups in the world mm -hmm. um, and it's not it, there's something very analog and very tactile mm -hmm. and very very emotional about yeah. just that that human element and I think especially too when you look at the spy thrillers two sides of the same coin uh, you know, that was we're in competition with the world, another side of something that is, you know, they're just, they're also people just like us, and they also have hopes and dreams, and we're in some sort of perceived competition with each other. That became a really interesting story yep. to tell in the context of two universes and two sides of, of, of a different coin. Sure. Um, well, that leads me to my next question, yeah. which is about the show deals with identity. Yes. Mm. Um, yeah. And... <laughs> Perhaps you have a relative that might have influenced you in writing Howard? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Howard actually very originally was, was derived off of, um, you know, thinking about my <coughs> grandfather uh, who worked for the uh, Treasury Department uh, for many years, uh, so going all the way back to Harry Truman. And uh, he was a very soft-spoken guy, uh, wore the same pair of sneakers every day on his way to work, and had a very kind of simple way about himself. And when he passed away, he left for us uh, a memoir, uh, a series of, of observations about his life. We had no idea he was a writer all this time. And for me, growing up, I mean, I always I came from a family of lawyers. I always thought that's going to be my destiny in some way, to become a lawyer. And then I saw this, and I said, oh, no, wait, there's an artist impulse, you know, and what would he be under a different set of circumstances? Is would he have become a writer? Would he have become this sort of more fulfilled version of someone? Not that he wasn't fulfilled as a lawyer. Uh, I wouldn't be fulfilled as a lawyer, so I'm glad that I got to witness that and to sort of see a different path. And I think that's what the show is about in a lot of ways. It's about exploring those different paths. So when you write Howard and his counterpart, yeah. Do you just immediately go for the opposite, or is it more nuanced than that? There's two versions, I think, for me, uh, and we talk about this a lot in the room. With every character, I think every writer has part of themselves in either side of that uh, character. and and. There are days when I wake up and I feel like Prime, and there are days when I wake up and I feel like Howard. And I always feel both ways, you know, and I always feel like I can hear those two sides of myself in conversation with each other. You know, there's a, we all have it, it's a shadow self, you know, it's that Jungian notion of there's another version of ourself who just exists beneath the surface of our everyday existence. And I think as writers, and as creators, you know, as creatives, we bring those aspects out when we write and when we put it into our craft. Yeah. And so I can always sort of see, as soon as it's like, okay, I gotta write for Howard Prime, I know exactly the kind of thing he would say about a situation and exactly the kind of thing that sure. the other Howard would but the, say. The places of intersection are just as interesting yeah. as the places. Of, yeah, because they would both share the intersect. same point of yeah. view about certain things yeah. too. Certainly, you know, the same, uh, 
the same woman uh, they, they find themselves drawn to. So, yeah. you know, there's, there's things like that that I think become very interesting. You're writing Top Gun 2? <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> can you tell me anything about that? Oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> I can tell you that uh, that Maverick's in it, uh, <laughs> and uh, that it's about airplanes, uh, and, uh, and and it's that, called Top Gun. Too. And it's called Top Gun too, <laughs> uh, and that I, you know I hope to see it uh, very soon. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much yeah, for your thank time. Thank you. Thanks so much.